So in this next module, I'm going to be giving a little bit of a tutorial to tell you how to approach the upcoming writing and editing assignments. If you are planning on participating in these, which is of course highly recommended, um, it would be uh, really helpful to watch this, especially for how to do the peer editing. We're going to use some conventions on doing the peer editing. So take a few minutes and watch this. So um, you have a paper due on Sunday night at 11.55 p.m. I'm going to stress that you have to get this paper in on time if you want to participate in the peer editing. The way the system works, if your paper is not in on time, it will not be distributed uh, to the peer editor. So, um, so please get your paper in on time for this assignment. Um, the peer editing, by the way, is a huge part of this course. You will learn a ton from having to edit your peers' work. Uh, it will give you a chance to practice all the things I've been talking about in this course. So uh, please uh, uh, try to get your paper in on time so that you can participate in that. So uh, just a quick review of the paper topics I've posted. So you have three choices. You can summarize a hot paper in your research field, or if you want, you could also summarize a classic paper. So that's pretty straightforward. Um, you could also write a book review. This will require, of course, that you read a book, and I'm asking you to write a book review about a nonfiction science or social science book so that it involves some original research. In all of these paper topics, I want you to have to describe some original scientific or social science research. So write a book review as if you would for, like, the New York Times. And then the third topic would be to write a profile of a scientist. And so you, that would involve you actually going out and interviewing someone. It can be a fellow student, it can be a colleague, it can be a professor if, if, they'll, uh, if they've got time for you to interview them. It has to be somebody who's doing some original research, again, so that you have the opportunity to describe some original either scientific or social science research. Now the paper has to be less than 500 words long, so that's pretty short. Uh, that's going to force you to practice writing in that kind of concise style that we've been talking about in this course. So those are your uh, choices. A number of you have asked me about, uh, you know, turning in a part of a manuscript that you're working on. Uh, that uh, you can do for the second paper topic. So when the second paper assignment comes up, I will have some choices that allow you to, to hand in pieces of original manuscripts you're working on. But for this paper topic, I want you to write something new. So these are your choices. And uh, just to go over how the grading is going to work. So you're going to hand in your paper. It's going to be reviewed by five peer reviewers. So you're going to get five sets of grades. You're also going to get five edited versions of your uh, paper. So your peer uh, reviewers are not only going to assess your paper, but they're also going to give you um, an edited copy. So you're going to see how, where they came up with, uh, you know, where they found places that needed to be worked on. Uh, you're going to get five sets of grades from your peer reviewers. I'm going to go ahead and just throw out the, the peer reviewer who, who graded you the lowest. I'm going to throw that out. That will allow for if there's any, um, you know, problems with the peer review process where people aren't taking the peer review process seriously, just in case, hopefully everybody will take it seriously, but uh, just in case I will throw out the lowest set of grades. So you'll be, your, your top four set of grades will be averaged. And you will be scored on, and of course you will be scoring your peers on, uh, on a scale of uh, starting at three and going down to zero. So three is really going to be for the most outstanding papers, the top 20%, so about one in five papers. So if they did a really, really good job on the particular category, you can score them as a three. If they did a good job, but they have some weaknesses in that particular category, it's kind of more of an average, they're kind of average in the group, that would be a, a scored as a two. One point would indicate kind of substantial weaknesses in a given area um, that they really struggled with that particular category. And then um, you would give them a, a zero if they just handed in an essay that wasn't uh, complete. That is, they had an unfinished paper or if you suspected that there was plagiarism going on. And, um, you know, obviously if it's plagiarized, it's going to get a zero. You may not be aware if it's plagiarized, but if you have an inkling that the paper might have been plagiarized, it's actually, there's pretty good ways to detect that. So one thing you can do if you think for some reason that the paper is plagiarized, you can just put a, a sentence, a full sentence uh, from the paper, the, from the material you think is plagiarized, put it in quotes and stick it in Google. And um, if, you know, if Google picks up, Google will often pick up the source that that came from. If there's an exact match on a whole sentence, 
it's very a very low probability that the student came up with that on their own. It's probably plagiarized. So just be on the watch out for that. Hopefully we won't have any of that going on in this course. So you will be graded on three categories. You'll get this zero to three score on three categories. So the first category is the clarity and concision of the writing. And this is everything I was talking about in unit one. So getting rid of clutter from your writing, writing in a clear and clean style, uh, being concise, not using too much jargon and acronyms. Remember, you're supposed to be writing here for a wide audience of scientists and peers in your class. Um, if there's major, major problems with the grammar that make the writing unclear, that will be picked up in this category as well. I don't want you to bother to downgrade uh, your peers if they have small grammatical er errors that don't affect uh, how clear the writing is. We're not going to be picky about uh, small grammar things. We're really looking for overall is the writing clear and concise. So that's category one. The second category is what I'm calling language and style. And this is everything I talked about in unit two of the course, week two, when I talked about using the active verbs, using strong verbs, not turning verbs into noun, and also what I talked about in the first couple of units, uh, the first couple of modules of week three, where I talked about varying your sentence structure and things like this. So this is about whether or not the writing is lively and engaging and active, and it really draws the reader in, and whether you have good word choice and good verbs and things like that. And so those are all really about the writing, the sentence level writing. The third category is a more holistic uh, category, which is looking at focus and organization. So that's asking the question whether or not each paragraph is, has one main idea, whether overall the essay, uh, the paper works, that is there's a clear theme to the paper, and that it's well organized and that the ideas flow nicely. So this is more a composition and paragraph level uh, question, and this is the kinds of materials I was talking, the kinds of things I was talking about in the second half of week three and the beginning of week four, so focus and organization. Each paper should have a clear theme to it, so if you're summarizing a hot or classic paper in your field, the theme is going to be something like, why is this research significant? So that's what the theme of that essay would be. If you're writing a book review, the theme should be, uh, did you like the book and do you recommend it for other readers? So that should be a clear theme. If you're writing the profile piece, uh, you actually have two choices on the theme for that one. You could either make the theme why the research is significant, or you could rather than focusing totally on the science, you could focus a little bit more on the person. That's a little bit more challenging to do, but would be perfectly okay, and it can be a really interesting piece to focus a little bit more on the, the, the scientists themselves and why the research is significant to them, you know, how they are, why, what motivates them. So something like that. So those would, there should be a clear theme for, for your paper though, and you will be graded on that. And of course, you also want to write in the kinds of style that we've been talking about so far in this course, trying to keep your language clear and concise and using all those good active verbs and varying your sentence structure. So that's the grading process. Uh, I'll just want to make a note that I will need a couple of volunteers. So when you're submitting your paper, there's a question on there that will ask you if you want to volunteer to have your paper edited in front of the class. So I'm going to pick a couple of papers from among those who volunteer, and I'm going to have some modules where I actually do a demo edit so I can kind of show you again my thought process and how I would edit something like this. So if you want to volunteer, you, you can choose to remain anonymous. I don't have to, uh, you know, advertise your name to the class if you prefer. Uh, but let me know, and I will be picking a couple edits. It would be a, a good chance for you to get your, edit, your work edited by me. Um, you have to be willing to, you know, have your work edited in front of the class. And I, I promise to say nice things as well as, to, as being critical. Um, so that's the, uh, the paper assignment. And then the other half of the assignment, so the paper is due this Sunday night at 11.55 p.m. A week following that, everybody who turned in a paper will participate in the peer assessment and editing. You will uh, edit five people's work. Your work will be edited by five other people. So um, you'll be doing an assessment. You'll be doing a grading for each of those papers, the grading that I just described in those three categories. You'll also be asked to provide some positive comments, some written comments back to the author. This is very important because uh, hopefully everybody who's turning in a paper is taking this really seriously. It's always very important that you turn back some positive comments and tell the author what you liked about their paper. So there's a box where I want you to put a couple of positive comments to say what were the strengths of the paper. So take that seriously. Uh, after you do the grading, then you're going to actually edit the paper itself. 
and you're going to provide to the author two copies of the paper. You're going to edit the paper, you're going to provide them a, a version in which you show you have a tracked changes kind of version like you would do track changes in Word. Uh, we don't, we're not doing uh, this assignment in Word, so I'm going to show you in a minute the conventions that I want to, you to use to show the person where you made those edits. And then also provide them a clean edited version so that they have a clean copy uh, you see, you know, of their revised essay, the edits that you're giving to them. So provide both of those. So here are the conventions, the editing conventions. And this is important because I want everybody to do this the same so there's some uniformity here. Again, if you, use, if you normally use Word, Word will do track changes for you, but we are not allowed to use any particular program in this class, so you're going to have to provide the indications of the edits in the, the text box. So here are the editing conventions that I would like you to use. Everywhere that you add new material, please bold that, so that will indicate to the writer that this is something that you've added. Everything you delete, you're going to use a strike through, and uh, bolding and strike through are available to you in, in the text box. And then if there are some little comments, don't put too many comments in, but if you have some comments you want to give to the author like, well, this part didn't make sense to me, I think you, you know, need to have a more focused paragraph. If you want to give them some little comments about particular sentences or piece, parts of their paper, put the comments in brackets in all caps. And so that will differentiate it that this is not something you're writing in the paper, but that it's a comment to the author. So let me just give you a couple of examples. So here's something I was editing. The original says on January 11, 2010, I'm not going to read through the whole thing, but you can kind of see it's about a particular uh, case that was a legal case. And um, so here's how what I'm going to provide back to the author on that little passage. So I'm going to give uh, a version where I show my edits using the conventions I just described, and then I'm going to give a clean edited copy. And there's two separate boxes in the assignment, so you can paste both of those in. So. Um, you can see that everywhere that I deleted something, I just did a strike through. Everywhere where I added something, I added it in bold. And then I wanted to, uh, you know, put a little comment to the author. So in brackets with all caps, I added the comment, something about uh, not putting too much detail in the lead sentence of their paper. So those are the conventions that we're going to use for the peer editing. Let me just do one more example. So here's another passage that I was editing. Again, you can see that I provided a version in which I show where I've made the changes. So everywhere I've deleted, I do a strike through. Everywhere I've added, I've added in bold. And then I, you know, put a little comment, hey, this is a good sentence that sets up the rest of your story. You can put positive comments as well as um, criticisms in those brackets in all caps. But let the reader know that this is a comment that you're giving to them by putting it in brackets in all caps. And then again, please provide a final edited clean version so uh, that the, the writer can see um, you know, a clean version that what you came up with. And try to be thorough in your edits and give really good feedback. It's again really great practice for you to edit, your, to edit other people's work. You'll learn, it'll kind of reinforce a lot of the concepts that we're talking about in this course. So good luck with the paper assignment, have fun with it, and have fun and enjoy the peer editing as well. The preceding program is copyrighted by the Board of Trustees of the Leland Stanford Junior University. Please visit us at med.stanford.edu.